Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and today I'm going to be talking about a game I'm net positive that you've probably never heard of before, and that's RoboQuest. Developed by a small team of developers known as Rise Up Studios, RoboQuest is an FPS set in the future where humans have lost their land and are now forced to live in the desert after getting their land taken by robots. A young girl named Max finds a guardian robot and upon waking it, it has one goal, protect mankind at all costs. The game has the two of you exploring the world and trying to figure out the cause of the robots going rogue but also fine to survive. I wanted to give a quick summary of the game's story there in case anyone was wondering about it. RoboQuest started off as an early access game back in August 21 of 2020 and I've been slowly following the game ever since, with big updates coming out every few months. I originally wanted to get the game when it fully released but thanks to Humble Bundle, I was given a copy courtesy of Humble Choice and got to experience the early portions of the game, which was great and awesome. My only problem with it back then was the lack of content and so I waited. Fast forward to now and the game has been fully released, with the final changes and improvements and it's a blast to play through. Think Gunfire Reborn, Doom and Borderlands combined into one game. I'm really excited to talk about this game because I think that even with the game being on the Xbox Game Pass, it's definitely a game that I believe will go under the radar even months after its release. And I'm going to try my best to talk about everything that RoboQuest does well, alongside its mechanics, replayability, fun factor and pure awesomeness. If you enjoy the video, like, subscribe, and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? RoboQuest may be a fast-paced FPS when you have a glance at gameplay, but it's more than just an FPS. It's an FPS roguelite, which for those who may not know what roguelite is, is a game that possesses elements of roguelikes such as permadeath and randomized level generation, but with meta progression that allows you to upgrade and become stronger, making later runs significantly easier. Runs will start pretty rough regardless of what difficulty you play on, but as you play more and earn the necessary materials, you'll spend those on essential upgrades that'll change the way the game plays and how items are distributed, since there's a good amount of RNG that goes into RoboQuest. It can't be roguelike without a random number generator. Runs can average for about 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour depending on what difficulty you play, and RNG ensures that each run is different, creating different playthroughs, playstyles, and builds. Locations you go to will vary depending on play input, and it's mostly point A to point B with secret levels that you can tackle to acquire certain objects if you wish. RoboQuest can be tackled either solo or with a buddy or brobot as they call them in game for an even harder but balanced experience and doesn't make the game too chaotic, given that the maps have been designed to cater to players. I've been seeing people complain about this and saying that they should add 4 player co-op because other games do it, but Rise Up have said that it would take way too much time to try and build it for 3 or 4 players. There's no reason for Rise Up to copy other games and opt for 4 player co-op because other games do it, as they can assign resources for either new projects or more RoboQuest updates. I mentioned randomized level generation for the sake of defining a roguelite game, and although the game does possess some aspects of procedural generation, all the levels look the same, but items and gear given to you will be different, so something to keep in mind in case you're expecting new environments every time like in Deep Rock Galactic for instance with its ever-changing caves. RoboQuest has 6 robots slash classes to choose from, each with their own abilities and perks that you can mix and match to create a build based on your picks and preferences. For your first run, you'll start off as the Guardian, a class with the intent of absorbing bullets with a safety bubble, which is a shield that can be used while moving around, and punching enemies with the bash melee attack. It also has a passive ability called Veteran, which increases weapon impact by 10%, magazine by 25 and energy by 15 making Guardian a good starting class. Some of the class's unique perks include an elemental bubble which causes an explosion of that element on the bubble expiring, and a bonk hammer which replaces the bash and ups your melee damage, while also giving you more health cells to work with in order to help with survivability. Speaking of health cells, I may as well go over those quickly. On kill, robots will occasionally drop health cells which can be used to heal yourself. There's two types of damage that you take which is your hard health or green HP and scratch damage which is marked in grey. When picking up cells with scratch damage, this will always be prioritized first and gives you more than usual to get you back up to speed as soon as possible. Any health you pick up after the scratch damage has been repaired will give you 1 HP per cell, although this can be changed with a stat known as healing efficiency, allowing you to earn more health per cell. As a little tip, aggression is a great way to play through RoboQuest and getting the cells will keep you alive for longer. Just make sure you get them before they disappear because they don't stay on the ground for very long. Ranger is the game's stealth class, allowing you to go invisible and stay out of sight which gets removed either at the end of the duration or from attacking. It also has a javelin for its secondary ability, which is thrown and can be regenerated by either waiting or by picking them up from the floor. Ranger's passive ability is called Awareness, where not taking damage builds up focus points that increase critical damage by 1% for each point. 
This, however, can be removed upon taking damage, so movement and careful use of stealth is key. Some of the class's unique perks include dealing more damage while in stealth and extending its duration, similar to Flax Fadeaway in Borderlands 3 or Zero's Deception in Borderlands 2, and accumulating more uses of the Javelin while also increasing weapon damage for a few seconds upon throwing the Javelin at an enemy. Commander would have to be my favorite class to use in RoboQuest, as it is the aggressive robot out of the six. He has two weapons for his abilities, which are the Rocket and Shorty. The Rocket works on a longer cooldown, but is your ranged weapon for blowing up robots from a distance, while the Shorty is a shorter cooldown ability that is designed to shred robots up close. These two in conjunction make for very aggressive plays that you can't do in other classes, and there's a lot of synergy between them with its unique perks, such as ricocheting your Shorty shots between enemies, increasing the number of rockets you can shoot per blast, and making your enemies use a specific element like fire or lightning. To further emphasize aggression, it has a passive ability called Fury which increases fire rate, reload speed, rocket and shorty attack speed, and movement speed by a certain percentage for every stack, earned by taking down robots with your abilities and damaging bosses. You can increase these stacks with perks. The Engineer is what I like to refer to as the chill class of RoboQuest, being able to deploy drones from enemy scrap found on the floor upon killing enemies. You can also increase the amount of scrap that drops with the blaster's secondary ability, which does explosive damage. Scrap helps with reducing the cooldown of deploy, allowing you to create more drones. The passive ability lets you repair all of your drones that are in the field when using the deploy ability, further emphasizing the player to keep using it instead of just leaving it out as an inactive skill when all available drones are deployed, which I think is a very cool dynamic to have. Some of the engineer's unique perks are adding special weapons to your drones, like a rocket launcher or a scanning projectile that marks enemies, dealing increased damage to them, as well as adding more drones and giving elements special effects. Recon is the melee class of RoboQuest, offering great mobility with its blink perk, which lets you teleport forward and trigger an explosion, while also having a laser dagger which gives healing cells upon killing enemies. Its passive ability Overslash lets you generate combo stacks that, when fully charged, overcharges your laser dagger to deal massively increased damage. Some of the class's unique perks include transforming your dagger into a cutlass, which increases melee damage and attack speed, and being able to execute enemies within a certain HP threshold. The Elementalist is the newest addition to the game's roster, cycling between the game's three elements. Its primary ability, Trinity, casts different abilities based on what element is available, such as a Fireball, Chain Lightning, and Ice Shards, and rotates over a time period. Its secondary ability, Comet, fires an explosive orb of a random element. Some of the class's unique perks include improving Trinity's effects, gaining more uses, and allowing one element to last for a longer period of time over others. Each class has their own playstyle and are all balanced, so pick what you like. You like having sidekick drones around while you play solo? Pick the Engineer. You want to play aggressively? Play Commando. You like being nimble and invisible while also dealing high damage? Play the Ranger. While I may have just talked about each class, you won't have all of them straight away as each class has its own conditions that you need to fill in before you unlock it, so be sure to check these by going into the base camp's class selector. Almost all of them are straightforward, with the Elementalist being a bit more complicated as you'll need to find a secret item known as a Chromatic Core. And that leads me to talk about the base camp, which is the game's main hub and source of meta progression upgrades. Throughout your runs, you'll earn wrenches, which are given by either finding data logs across each level, which give 3 each, enemies, or increasing the difficulty level, which RoboQuest has 8 total, with Discovery being the all-in-all -all easiest difficulty, and Guardian 4 being the hardest. You'll start with only Discovery, Easy, Standard, and Hard, and earn Guardian difficulty after your first completion, which you have to complete one after the other to earn the others. Each difficulty increases enemy health, damage, and aggressiveness, with Hard and High giving you additional wrenches per level. I highly recommend to start on either Easy or Standard as you'll be very limited on your item choices, then once you complete your first run on either, go up by one difficulty level. So if you're on Easy, go to Standard, if you're on Standard, go to Hard. Alternatively, if you're on Standard, you could go straight to Guardian 1 as I didn't find it to be too challenging, having about 75% of the upgrades after completing my first run, which took me a good 15 or so hours to achieve. Base camp upgrades are essential to success and you'll be spending your hard earned wrenches on these. These range from weapons having more things on them to NPCs providing items of higher quality. You'll be working from the top down with the circles on the side displaying your base camp level and you'll need to purchase an X amount of upgrades to level up to the next one. They'll be greyed out at first, then coloured once you've unlocked the row. The upgrades to the right on the other hand are earned by obtaining power crystals, items that are acquired through secret levels known as corrupt levels, where you play through the level same as any other, then pick up the crystal at the end. These crystals also help with the game's final level, providing different bonuses and making it a lot easier to complete, but at the cost of more elite enemies spawning. 
On the bright side, they'll give you more power cells, which you'll need to upgrade and obtain items in each of your runs. So how does the standard run of RoboQuest work? Well, Junior, I'm glad you asked. For every level with some occasional checkpoints, you open Max's chests and pick from a choice of weapons, starting off at low rarity. The starting area will only be for weapons, but after that, you'll encounter NPCs such as Bazaar Bob, who offers items that can be crafted, Smithing Joe, who can forge weapons, and Chef Paul, who can upgrade and reroll weapons. There's also Heisenbot too, who is earned by finding the red power crystal, and he sells corrupted items, items that have both a positive and negative effect. All NPCs use power cells as their main source of currency, so it's a matter of min-maxing and figuring out what items to get for your build. You'll also be getting more of Max's chest too, which will begin to include items on top of weapons, so you don't need to be using the NPCs all the time if you don't feel like you need anything. Upon reaching the first checkpoint, you have an option to pick from one of three destinations, two which will be locked until you complete the corrupt levels to obtain their associated keys, so Oasis is to go to here. Each location branches out to different locales, so feel free to change it up if you feel bored going to the same second area over and over again. Each level has corrupted areas where you do some sort of puzzle and reaching the end of these areas will give you corrupted crates, which work the same as Max's crates. You'll also be earning XP which, upon leveling up, grants you an upgrade point that can be put into either neutral perks or class perks, which is differentiated by new perk, which is class perk, and new upgrade, which is neutral perk. I also forgot to mention, power cells drop from enemies and based on the rating of a level, which, when you complete it, you'll be given a rating based on the amount of XP you earn and how fast you complete it. Very cool system they have here, which encourages you to complete a level as fast as possible for those extra cells that can give you a boost later on in the run. That's as simple as it gets. Kill robots, level up and gain upgrades, buy an upgrade as you please, get stronger. Don't forget about the helping repair bot, which repairs any damage you took. If you want to open new areas in the game and earn more stuff, you'll have to use your brain a bit to find these. RoboQuest has plenty of secrets to discover and you want to be trying to go for these as you'll get rewarded the power crystals I mentioned earlier and another set of items called gadgets, which provide special uses. My favorite gadget is the jetpack, which lets you fly and maintain air height for a period of time. Incredibly useful and arguably the best gadget in the game, as movement is so important to survival. You obtain this bad boy by completing a hidden level called the fusion core, which upon completing a cheeky platforming puzzle, gives you a nose which you give to this robot in another area and boom, you have a jetpack. This is one of many secrets in the game and most you'll probably find on your own, which to be honest, it's probably better that way. I mean, they're called secrets after all. There's guides on YouTube now for owning each of the game's secrets and collectibles, but since the power levels are tied to game progression and are imperative to success for the final level, I don't blame anyone who looks it up just for those. There are 11 total gadgets to find and you're able to toggle these on and off, so there's no limit to how many you can equip. The secrets are more or less for those gadgets, but there's also a few other things that I don't want to spoil that are cool and are worth finding for yourself. With great gameplay comes great guns and RoboQuest has you covered. There's a variety of weapons ranging from assault rifles to submachine guns, snipers, grenades, special weapons, energy weapons, and more. I can't stress how many different guns there are and all of them feel different and fun to use. Some of my favorite guns in the game are the dual sword offs, the sheriff's carbine, junk beam, and the grammar shotgun. Though three of these are typical and have been seen in other games, the junk beam is one of a kind, shooting a laser that feels something straight out of the borderlands of the pre-sequel, and it's awesome. Every gun can be carried over to the late game, provided that the rarity and level of the gun are sufficient enough. In Borderlands fashion, guns are categorized into five colors, which in order are white, green, blue, purple, and orange. As guns get higher in rarity, they'll spawn in more affixes, which are modifiers to add power to a weapon, like extra projectiles, firing twice, increased movement speed, faster reload speed, and more. There's also two colors for rarities, which are your basic green affixes, which are general buffs, and your special blue affixes which are special buffs that change the feel of a weapon. I would mention more of these but there's so many of them that we'd be here forever. Guns can also be upgraded to provide more damage and better range, and if you found a gun that you just love so much and has good affixes on it, you can push it and level the gun all the way to the max level if you so choose. Most of the time you'll be switching between different guns and you may not get the gun you want every time, so be sure you have some backup weapons that you like using in case the main option isn't available. With plenty of Max's chests to open and smithing Joe's that you'll see, you'll have more than enough options to experiment and try new things. Items and buffs that are given to the player and also come with their own 5 rarities, same as weapons but with the addition of the 6 rarity, Corrupted, which as mentioned before gives you a positive and negative effect. These range from healing efficiency to more damage, auto critical chance, reduced cooldowns, not consuming ammo on takedown for a short period of time, and many more. 
As you continue playing, more and more items will show up which will be indicated by new if you haven't tried it yet. And even now with just over 20 hours of 1.0, I'm still getting new things to try out. The bread and butter of an FPS is within its combat, so what does RoboQuest do? It combines sliding, jumping, weapon swapping, roller skating and lots of shooting to create a fast paced arena shooter that flows so flawlessly that once you get the mechanics down, it'll be a cakewalk. Now granted, the mobility is a bit limited at first because you'll be down a few items like the jetpack and grappling hook but don't nerf the movement too much to where you can't complete runs without them because you definitely can. It's smooth and crisp with gun sounds giving that oomph feeling and really resembling whatever you're shooting with really, whether it's an energy weapon or a magazine gun. Movement is very important in RoboQuest because standing still for even a second will get you killed, given the amount of moving enemies that can be at any time, so staying on your toes and making use of your momentum such as movement speed or parkouring the environment is how you mitigate, sustain and protect yourself. This is all on top of being aggressive too for those healing cells, but I think it's a matter of being passive aggressive. Play aggressive if you know you can, play safe if you're low on health or need to take your time for a moment. Over time, I've also learned that target prioritization is important as well. Taking out the high damaging targets first, then moving on to the lower damaging ones. This becomes essential when you start getting more elite enemies in your runs. The boss fights are also fantastic too with good boss mechanics and no immunity phases. Which may not seem like a big deal for everyone, but it is for someone like me who despises immunity phases. Literally every Borderlands 3 boss fight. But makes it so that lead can be rained down upon them until they die. And in a game that is built upon being fast, that's a net positive. Produced by Noise Cream, who interestingly produced the OST for my friend Pedro as well, which I thought was fantastic. The soundtrack in this game goes hard. Maybe too hard. It's punchy, it's fast, packs lots of bass, and scratches that heavy metal itch that I miss so hard from the modern Doom games. My favourite song from the track would have to be X-Flash, using one of the game's secret levels where you have to speed run from one end to the other, followed by defusing a bomb. There's these yellow things you get as well that boost your speed for a few seconds and the rhythm of the level fits this perfectly. RoboQuest uses a comic and cartoony art style, often being resembled by Borderlands because of its looks. Funnily enough, they didn't get inspiration from Borderlands as developer Elliot Young got inspiration from Overwatch, Ratchet and & Clank and previous roguelites such as Nuclear Throne and Gunfire Reborn, which, when you compare it to Gunfire Reborn, they do look awfully similar, but not in a bad way. To further show this, when you shoot a weapon, comic book words will come out of the gun or weapon, and I think it's a nice attention to detail. The cutscenes got changed too, opting for a more realistic approach, and showing more as opposed to the old comic strip ones which I can't find anywhere on the internet, but nevertheless, awesome art style and great level design across the board. RoboQuest is an amazing FPS, one that I want people to play so badly because it's a gem of a game and an arena shooter, something we don't see very much of outside of retro FPS games. That being said, you shouldn't sleep on this game, as you get tons of money and value with it, has a great gameplay loop and Wise Up Studios have already started working on the next update, which is set to update the end game. I highly recommend you buy RoboQuest. It's available on Steam, GOG and Xbox for full price, but if you have the Game Pass, I recommend you play through it on there first to see how you feel, then decide on whether or not you want to buy it. And getting a friend can make the difference between getting a few hours and a few hundred hours. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.